It's typewriter day. Be sure to give me a like, thumbs up, subscribe. I always forget to ask, but I'm thinking about it right now. So today I have a 1968 SM9 and the SM9 videos are our most popular videos on our channel, which ironically the most popular video is the very first SM9 video I did years ago. I don't know why everybody keeps going to that one or why the algorithms keep taking y'all to that one because it's like one of the first videos. It's an early, early video. So uh, I, I dread to even think about what it looks like, sounds like. But nevertheless, it's obviously helpful to people because y'all like it. But I'm gonna do, here's another SM9 video, but this one is the 1968, which is one of the last years. I think they went into 1969. But this is the last color scheme that they that Olympia did on the SM9. So instead of the turquoise and the pearl white, it's now satellite white and dove gray. So I'm gonna turn around the camera, we're gonna type on it, and I'm gonna give you a closer look. Okay, so when it comes to the SM9, most of us are used to the turquoise and the pearl white. But like I said before, this is satellite white, which I like it. It's much more subdued. It's a grayish white neutral, and it has the dark gray keys. It has the gray um, bottom panel and the gray sides. I love this, but this happens to be some of my favorite colors. Um, I guess I should have turned my camera around and shot the video in the other direction because you'll notice that my house is in gray and white. Um, needs a little bit of touch up, but um, my house uh, colors, except for the kitchen, uh, is gray and white. Okay, so it has nothing to do with an Olympia SM9, but this one is really elegant. I really like it. SM9s are good typers, but um, I was never drawn to them specifically. But this one has really captured my attention. And just as with all the other SM9s and Olympias in general, it's a very, very good typewriter. So um, I guess let me do a really, really quick pictorial. So if you have an SM9, uh, get it out, follow along. If you have an older one that's turquoise and white, it's still going to work the same. So let's take a look. So um, I'm going to lift it up a bit. Uh, you're not going to be able to see that. I'll put it back down. All right, so there's a little metal button back here. Just press that. That is your paper holder, uh, which I really like. Okay, so you've got the the kind of the plastic back panel there, and you have your margin sets, which you squeeze and move. Just squeeze and move. That's these things right here. I know my fingers get in the way. Uh, tab clear is this little lever. Um, that's like an all clear. You have your tab sets down here as well, and we'll get there. So to move your carriage, there is a lever right here. It's also on both sides. A lot of times they're the they're where this tab clear is, but they're on top, and you just press down. The carriage should pull to the left. If it doesn't, your draw band is probably broken, or you might have your carriage lock on. So uh, if you center your carriage and then you have um, a white or if you have an older SM9, it's turquoise lever. You just kind of engage that and tap your carriage to make sure it's locked in. And then now you can't move the carriage. And this is just great for storing or if you're gonna be moving, carrying it around or something like that. So to unlock your carriage, tap down, you'll see that kind of jump to the side and there you go. And this has a really nice sounding bell. Also, Olympias are very known for their smoothness. And so that carriage, um, as I like to say, it feels like butter. It should just glide right on over. Okay, on the right side, you have your paper release. On your left side, there's your carriage. And then this is your line selector. And the dot is kind of, it disengages that line selector and it disengages the um, return handle. And then you have single line, double, triple, okay? Um, 
There we go. So let me move. I'm going to move the carriage to the left. Get that handle out of the way. And I believe on, yes, there we go. On the SM later SM9s, the 1968 and 69, this lever you push down for storage because the car the case is, um, is a little bit uh, more compact. It's still a big case because it's a big typewriter. But on the um, pre-1968, those cases were really, really big. But this one has a zippered case, a little bit smaller, so you just tap that handle down before you store it. And then when you take it out of your case, and this is, if you're new to it and you bought one, your handle's probably down, so you just pop that up into position. Okay, now that that's popped up, I'm gonna open this up, and you do it by grabbing your uh, the top part of the top shell of the typewriter and you pull up and so you pull it from down here not up here so you pull it from down here that opens up it's on a hinge and there you can access your spools we have metal spools on this one but you can use plastic universal spools spools if you want um, here are your type bars and um, you have these little metal arms that hold in your spools. Okay, so when you wanna take it out, you're gonna to have to move that arm back, um, pop the spool out, and then pop it back in. The black is on top, the red is on bottom. This is a two color ribbon, black, red is standard, but you can get other colors if you want. We only carry the black and the red. And if you go to our website at jotandtittletypewriters.com backslash shop, then you'll see what rib, um, ribbon options we have. Also, if you wanna use your original spools, we have that option where you can send us your spools. We'll put fresh ribbon on it for you and send it back. And that is called the custom ribbon option. Okay, so um, I'm gonna lift this up and get it closer to the camera so you can see that ribbon vibrator there and just get an idea of how it's threaded through because showing you how to thread the ribbon is, is really, really difficult. But basically, um, I don't even think I can show you on this one. But up, hold on. So there will be little guide wires kind of at the top here. Let me see if they show up better. Yeah. Um, but if you look at yours and look behind here, and you can, um, there's these little guide wires and you gotta make sure your ribbon goes through those, okay? And I'm sorry, it's just, I'm not gonna be able to show them to you because of how they're positioned. But your ribbon is gonna go up and around the top, around the back and underneath. Same with this one. And these little guide wires are back here. They're kind of off to the top part of the spool area. And then you got to thread it through that ribbon vibrator. So if you need to go back to where I held it up close and pause it and take a screenshot, you know, do so. Um, but you're just going to, it's a mess and it's a pain and it'll take you a few times to figure it out. But once you get it figured out, then you're kind of good to go. But it's really difficult to show you guys because all you'll see your hands. But there are slits in this and I believe they're on the back side but you're just gonna have to work that ribbon through until it's sitting in that vibrator as you see it sorry I can't offer a little bit better view on that maybe somebody else has figured out how to position their um, camera and get it in there so that um, you can see how to do that okay so um, hold on a second here I'm looking The ribbon reversal, I believe, is this one right here. Oh, no, here it is. Okay, so those guide wires that you can't see, the, they are also your ribbon reversal, um, your manual ribbon reversal. So when you get to the end of your ribbon, it's not the end of the ink. You're going to want to reverse that ribbon back and forth because it's going one direction and you're typing and then you're going to run out of ribbon and then you just go and have it wind the opposite direction. This ribbon should last you a really long time uh, because there's a lot of ink in there. But to manually reverse it, you just click. 
And um, some of them, it doesn't matter which side, but this one it does. So if it doesn't move, so I just, that one moved and it clicked, that means it reversed the direction. Um, but now it's not going to move. That means I have to go to this side and click it. All right. So there is your ribbon reversal. Right here is your tension selector, and that determines how hard your tight bars are going to strike your paper. And that, the other way to adjust the tension is with your fingers as well. My husband has a very heavy hand when he types. It feels like he's typing through the, he's going to type right through the table and through the floor and into the basement when he's typing because it's like, bam, bam. I have a very light touch. And so we would have different settings. Um, for this. I personally don't see a lot of difference, but some of you, the more you type, the more sensitive you're, you get with your keys. And that's probably when this, this tension selector will become beneficial to you as you really get to know your typewriter and you can feel how to adjust uh, with your fingers. I mean, it's, um, I don't know how else to explain it other than you just kind of have to experience it. Okay, so the arrow here is your backspace, um, your tab. So this does have tabs. You can set them here. So let's set one right here. You can also clear it. So we'll go back and that should be cleared. And uh, so that is how you set and clear your tabs if you want to use them. Margin release is for when you get to the end, you know, when you're typing, that bell's going to go off when you get close to your margin that you have set here. And when you get to that margin, the typewriter is going to stop and then you use the margin release. You'll see it kind of jiggle like that. And now you can finish your word and then go on to the next line. Um, your color selector is right here on the right side. So on the bottom is red. The middle is a white, which is a stencil setting. That means that when you go to type, I don't like to type without a piece of, let me load a piece of paper in here. What happens is, is your type bar is striking the paper. However, the vibrator is not raising, so it's not engaging with the inked ribbon. And, um, and that's a good setting if you have like the correction, old correction tapes where you put the correction tape in there and then you type the letter. That's good for that. But um, basically you will probably never use the stencil setting. So if you're typing and it's not imprinting, there's probably two things that you need to do. You need to reverse the direction of your ribbon or you need to make sure that your color selector didn't... Um, pop down onto the stencil setting, which happens more often than you realize. And then the top, I know it has a blue button, you know, little button there. It's actually your black ribbon. I don't know. They all do that. So, um, okay. So it stopped margin release. This, this particular typewriter is just insanely good. I love it. Anyway, that's the basics of how to use an Olympia SM9. And like I said, this is a 1968 version. This, an SM9 is going to be excellent for active writers. I mean, you are somebody, you, if you're somebody or you know someone, they want to do a ton of writing. An Olympia is what I'm going to suggest, and the SM9, I mean, they're all great, so it kind of depends on if you want a different color or if you like the shape, um, but the SM9 is just, it has much more, has the angled body, a very modern and sleek look to it, and um, I particularly love this um, Saturn white and slate gray color combination. It's very elegant to me. All right. I hope you found this interesting and helpful. Always appreciate you. You guys have an awesome day.